Hey again, this is Adam with Cleaver. In a previous video, I showed you how to create a WordPress site using Cleaver with just a single click of the button, and we see that site right here. When I was creating that site, I also enabled fast CGI, in which case, if I hover over that little lightning icon right there, that's what I see is being enabled. And I wanna show you a little more exactly what is going on when you enable fast CGI to speed up the download speeds of your website for your users. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the site. And then once you click on a site, you get thrown into the settings area for the site. And you have a couple options, authentication and fast CGI cache. Authentication is actually pretty cool. Let's take a couple minutes to look at this real quick. If I click on the tab on the browser right here, this is basically the sample site, the WordPress site that I created. All I really did so far was add a theme to it, one of the CAN themes that was available. And we can see that, hey, this site really looks like it's just in progress. All the content is just placeholder content, including the pictures and the text. And it's really just vanilla, and this isn't something that I'm really proud of and I want the whole world to see. Well, what if someone had your URL and went to your website? Well, there's nothing preventing them right now from you know just seeing all this in work progress. But what if you wanted to add authentication to that so you could say, hey, only people with the correct credentials can view what I'm doing. Otherwise, you can't. And that's actually a pretty awesome thing, especially if you have clients. Like if you're working on this WordPress site with a client, well, you don't want everyone to see it, but you want your client to see it. Well, this is what this authentication tab is for right here. So to show you that, I'm gonna go ahead and create a user real quick. Uh, as we'll see, we'll need a user in order to actually authenticate and view the site. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a username. Let's just call it user. And then password, we'll call it password. And then add that. And you could add multiple username password combinations, but I'm just gonna add this one for demonstration. And now I'm gonna click on lock site, and that's gonna lock the site at the domain level, at the server level. And it'd be useful if I actually click on lock site. All right, so I clicked on it and now it's in the process of locking the site. It says site is locked. Well, let's go take a look at that. So if I go here and then refresh the page, I am now prompted with this username and password. So if a visitor just went to this domain, before they see anything, they'll see this. If they click on cancel, they'll see that, a 401 error. Ooh, that's pretty boring, huh? So let's go ahead and refresh that again, and then type in the username and password. So user as the username, and then password, I put in as the password. Well, maybe I didn't, or maybe I mistyped it. Let's try that again. All right, and now I'm authenticated in, and I can see the site. Again, this is great for in-progress sites or sharing it with your clients, and that's what the authentication tab allows you to do. If I ever wanna go in and unlock the site, take away the um, password protection, just go ahead, click on unlock site. But now let's go to FastCGI. So FastCGI is where a lot of the magic happens. So this is server level caching using Nginx. Um, if you go down here, you see cache settings. A lot of this is just the cookie cutter, typical cache settings that you would want for your PHP, including your WordPress site. But if you wanna get a little more advanced, uh, you can learn more about you know, how you could update the script and then make the modifications that you want and then click on update. But I'm just gonna show you what it looks like at this default level. And to do that, I'm gonna go back over to my sample site here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and then inspect element. And then when this Console up here appears. Let's see, what you wanna do is click on the network tab and then we'll find a resource that will be uh, cached. So I'm gonna click on that first one here and then I think what I need to do is refresh the site again. Okay, and then I could scroll down and let's see, has this one been cached? Okay, cool. So I can see that this particular resource right here under the response header, and I do have the header tab also uh, selected right here, I see FastCGI cache hit. So what that basically means is that 
it hit the cache to pull down that particular resource. So it basically sped things up. So that's what you want to see in terms of items that are cached uh, that um, show up quickly on your browser there. But let's say I want to go back here and then clear my cache. So from time to time, if you make updates to your website and you want to clear the cache, let's say you change an image or you change some kind of resource where you want to make sure that the server now uses the latest versions or the latest assets, go ahead and click on a clear cache. Otherwise, what might happen is your users might see the, the previous thing, whatever is cached on the server, and that might not be what you actually want them to see. But to see what that looks like, click on clear cache and then go back to this tab. And if we recall, this is the previous state of this particular page. We could see that this particular item was hitting the cache. And so now that we have no cache because everything was cleared, if I go ahead and refresh the page and click on that resource again and then scroll down, we'll see that FastCGI uh, cache is missed. So basically this means, hey, now it's pulling from the server because it wasn't in the cache. But now this should be cached and the next time I refresh, we should see a hit. In which case we do. So that's what you wanna see with the fast CGI caching and when you clear your cache and then uh, go back to your site and then basically you know, create the new cache on your server. Of course, you could always go in here and disable your cache too if you don't want uh, the resources to be pulled from a cache state on your server. Another cool thing to look at is if I am back on this page right here and we see that caching is hitting the cache store right now. If I refresh this page, so if we go here, we could see that the load time is 375 milliseconds. You know, it's not super fast, but if I refresh it, you could see that it kind of just hovers around, what would you say, around 360 milliseconds? It seems to average around that. And that's with my cache enabled. And then if I go back here and then disable the cache, well, let's see what happens now after I disable the cache. All right, my cache is enabled, or disabled, rather. Go back here and then start refreshing. So before it would average around 360. And now it seems to be averaging around the upper 300s. Let's say around 390. And now low 400s. So we could see on average it's taking about about 40 milliseconds longer to download your site. And then let's go back here and then enable cache again. And let's go back here and then start our little impromptu test here. And then start refreshing. Again, we could see that it's going back down to around 360 milliseconds. 406. 364, 442, 359, 368. So we can see on average, it is floating again around 360 milliseconds with my cache turned back on. So in a world where site speed means everything, this goes a long way. 30 to 40 second differential in load times goes quite a long way. And this also helps with SEO as well because site load times is one of the metrics that search engines such as Google use in order for their SEO calculation. All right, so I just wanted to show you what FastCGI does when enabled for your website.